So I thought I'd do a, a segment uh, right now on on the equipment I've chosen to spray up the whole mould and in fact all the internal modules and the deck when I get around to it. It's very important to select equipment that's very specific for the task and, and this is a very specific task. I mean gel coating requires a couple of things. It requires a good even uh, delivery of pressure. It requires uh, good catalyzing uh, or correct catalyzing. It requires good clean dry air and, uh, and a constant delivery. So I came up with a system without spending too much money. I, I probably, uh, you know, probably overspent, but, but the equipment I've got is, is in fact what I think was the best I could have had uh, for, the, for the purpose. And, and so far, and I'm at the stage where I've got um, all my foam uh, laid down in the hull. I've got um, uh, about eight layers of, of, of cloth down on top of the gel coat in the, in the mould, so I'm really in a great position and, and my equipment has served me very well. There has been ups and downs with that equipment um, and I'll try to highlight what they were and, and they're very, very simple things but I've had to work through them. So the problem solving exercise has, has actually been quite uh, a good learning experience for me and, and as a result you tend to master the equipment you've got. Without going crazy and buying you know, $10,000 screw compressors, I've been able to do it with a not a home handyman version, but certainly something that uh, is available in most tool shops um, with the addition of, of some other gear. So I'll run you through that gear and I'll just explain what I've got. Uh, about a year ago, I, I had a small sort of 50 litre um, standard sort of belt drive compressor and, and had a number of problems with gel coating in, in when I was building some kayaks and a lot of that was uh, moisture and then the resultant drop in pressure that these things tend to have when they've got a heavy use tool on them such as a spray gun, a sand or a, a nail gun or whatever. Um, and, and the other thing I noticed too in my factory unit was the noise. I mean about 80 decibels is pretty pretty uh, intrusive on a daily basis especially if it's catching up all the time. So. I sought out this one, this uh, Chicago air compressor. Um, Chicago Pneumatics make this one. It's a, it's called a Hush 100, and, and it's a 100 litre tank, so it's it's probably not on the bigger side of uh, compressors, but it's also very portable. It's about 90 kilos. It's uh, got six motors that are all uh, oilless. So the beauty of that is we have Teflon rings in them, and, uh, and, and the nice thing about that is there's no impurity entering the airstream. That's one thing that was pretty important for me spraying uh, spray paints, um, gel coats and, and resins. So with this unit, um, each individual, each individual uh, pump or compressor has its own filtration. So this is the air intake here and there's a small air filter in here that, uh, you know, provided you keep it in a relatively dust free environment, you're going to end up with nice clean dry air to start with, so that, that's part of the, the reason why I chose this machine. The intake's tiny, if I put my finger over that, it'll actually suck on, but um, I try to keep this machine as clean as possible, but working in a boat building environment is, is not a clean environment, so I'm forever cleaning, sweeping, making sure the dust is out of here. Uh, the reality is you're, you're pushing shit uphill with a broomstick to try to keep these things clean, so you do the best you can and, uh, and you move forward. Um, so having six individual uh, pumps means that I can replace one unit if anything goes wrong with this one. I've still got these two as backups, but I can take one at a time and replace them. Um, the local service technician, you know, they, they, they pretty much rely on them. And uh, the nice thing about this is you've got three air intakes. You can change the filters so you can clean it out. And once again, we're controlling the quality of the air that's coming to our device or our, our tool at the end. Um, interestingly, the name Chicago Hush 100 is, indicates a 100 litre tank, but it also, Hush means that it's been silenced. This thing runs at about 56 decibels, um, which is substantially quieter than a, than a standard belt drive compressor. So that was another reason why I went for it. I love that in the workshop that I can hardly hear this thing running so much so that I don't even know it's running half of the time. That's been a really good feature of this particular brand. I don't, this isn't a blatant ad for it, but I'll tell you now, it's been, it's been an absolute winner. And I use this in a commercial sense all the time. 
Um, I would certainly own a smaller one, a 50 litre one for on the job if I was out working on a remote site, but this one's been brilliant. I, in fact, I would consider buying a 200 litre one just to have the storage. So the next item of choice uh, that I made the decision to purchase, and, and this one's been one of the best decisions I've ever made, is this, this unit here. It's a Atlas Copco F15 um, air dryer. Effectively, it's a refrigeration unit for air. You're taking uh, compressed air in through an intake, feeding it through a complete refrigeration system. And uh, the beauty of this thing is that it can control the dew point of the air. So it's actually uh, condensing any air that's in that, or any moisture that's in the air and removing it every minute or so, I hear this thing vent and it actually dumps the air for me or dumps the moisture, therefore the impurity and keeps my air quality really high. Now I wanted this thing portable so I could take it from my unit back and back and forth as I need it uh, for a certain job. So I got onto eBay and found a tool, a tool tray and uh, mounted it on it and essentially uh, by doing that I can now roll it you know, 50 metres back to my factory unit and, uh, and I can uh, keep it reasonably portable. But this thing, uh, it's obviously electrically run, um, is when you switch it on, what it does is it starts to refrigerate the air. The more even pressure than I would get just straight out of the compressor. So not only have I got a moisture travel in the compressor, I've got an air dryer as well which is then drying the air to a, a whole new level. We're talking like 99% of uh, impurities removed and 99% of moisture removed from the air, giving me a really, really good quality air delivery system. Okay, so when you buy this thing, um, it doesn't come with anything other than an input and an output. So what I did is I came up with a, a solution, which is quite a convoluted uh, uh, device here, but the air input enters here into the refrigerator or into my air dryer and comes to here and I, I rigged up a, um, this setup for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I wanted it to be able to be, uh, to, to be changeable. I didn't want to go soldering copper wire, copper pipe. But I'm using copper again for another good reason because copper actually helps the water condense as well. Um, the beauty of that is that it actually, you, at every stage I'm trying to remove water from this, this, this air. So the air comes in the inlet up to here. I put a shut off valve um, or a sort of a bypass valve into here, but the air flows in here into the air dryer, gets dealt with in the condenser, then gets vented out of the hose down here, which I'll show you in a minute, and then back out, and then makes its way out to my device, out to my tool or my uh, gel coat machine. Now, should I decide to bypass the machine, and let's say I'm using a sander or something, or a drill, um, I can simply shut this one off and open up this one, bypass my... Uh, my refrigerator altogether, and that puts sort of you now put less load on my on my uh, air dryer, and, and ultimately hopefully get a longer life or a bit more longevity out of it. So you can see here the way the air is flowing through; it's gone through here and back out of here and down. Now it can't go back because I've got a shut off valve here, but it comes forward, and then I've got it entering two high quality again Atlas Copco filters. Um, the first one removes the larger impurities, any sort of particle or anything that might be uh, floating around in the air that's come out of the compressor. And, uh, and that can be vented uh, down here. We've got the ability to be able to, to drain that. Um, and then through another one, which actually reduces the particle size down again. And ultimately what's coming out of the end here is, is as good as I could get in a, in a commercial sense here. So right here is a timer and I can actually set it every five to 10 seconds or up to 45 seconds and, but oh, sorry, that's a minute and that's a second. So I can essentially um, get it to vent whenever I need it to. And the beauty of that is that, uh, you know, it's removing the water out of the condenser all the time. Now, pumps the water here out of this tube down here and just sprays it onto the ground. Third component of my uh, gel coating resin delivery system uh, after my compressor and my air dryer is then we have a, a standard high pressure hose that feeds in and joins into this machine here. Now this machine is a, uh, a gel coat sprayer. Um, it has a Graco um, external mix uh, delivery gun, which I'll talk you through in a moment. Um, it's in pieces at the moment, but. Over here, you'll see this machine. Um, this, this is specific only to the composites industry. You're not gonna find this machine in any other industry. So 
I did a lot of research. I looked at uh, you know options all over the world, and uh, and a lot of them quite simple. You can buy second hand ones, but then you're going to have part problems, uh, sourcing parts and components that you need. The other thing too is because you're generally buying these things from overseas, and in fact we imported this one, um, you've got to be pretty good at uh, at self service. Um, having a good backup system for parts and advice is, is certainly essential. Um, but I found uh, with my history of uh, servicing breathing apparatus when I was younger and, and, and just problem solving through my own business is that uh, pretty much everything can be fixed on this machine. Here we have a, a, an air tack cylinder. Uh, this actually is the main nuts and bolts of the machine. What this does is it drives a piston rod down and uh, and activates a pump down here. Now these these things are pretty specific to uh, a lot of pneumatic machines. Source that on uh, on eBay or through the through the manufacturer will actually send me another one should anything ever happen to this. Uh, to date, with this machine, it's uh, it's been incredibly reliable. Uh, the second part of this is is this piston rod here uh, drives this this particular shaft into a an oil reservoir here. Uh, which lubricates it and then in this area here this black cylinder here is is two ceramic balls and that acts as a pumping system to pump resin um uh be it gel coat and, and these are highly sort of um you know very thickened resins that we're using and gel coat is a, a, a thickened resin uh, so you can't just do this with a normal pump so that the resin enters here is pumped up and down this particular machine it hits these two little uh air activated valves and and, and again mechanical no electronics in this in this machine so that can be fixed that can be fixed that can be replaced in two minutes so anything that goes wrong with this machine can generally be fixed uh pretty quickly i wouldn't say overly quickly i've had a couple of issues with it but but by pumping up and down you're drawing resin from a reservoir up into the pump and then back out into this uh, um, what, what I guess we call it a reservoir, and then uh, and then out to my gun. At the same time as the pumps pumping the resin, um, there's a secondary pump on the other side, which I'll show you in a moment. That actually pumps the catalyst. Uh, this is your MEKP Norox or whatever you're using, depending on whether it's vinyl ester or, or uh, polyester. Um, pumps it out at a measured catalyzed rate. So I'm able to set it for anywhere from 1% to 4% depending on the conditions. And uh, that's been really advantageous because I have had an incredibly dry and warm winter here. So I've had to lower my catalyst down. Um, humidity has a, a very, very interesting effect on, on resins as you catalyze them. So being able to control the catalyst delivery has been so critical. This uh, is the catalyst pump. Um, it's driven by an arm here, and you'll notice here that we can adjust the catalyst from 0.6 through to 3.9 or even 4. Um, I'm sort of at that stage of the season where I need to be down around 1.5%, so because things are going off quite quickly. And to change that, I simply need to unplug this. So the kiwi there, pull the pump out and then adjust it down to the next level. Now I must do that on the bottom as well. So both, uh, both um, settings need to be made the same. And then it's driven by the piston down here. As that pump goes up and down, so does this arm. And I'll just get back here. I'm actually 15 feet up in the air here on a pallet rack. Um, you'll see here it's pumping up and down and it's already pumping and refluxing the uh, the catalyst into the reservoir. By doing that, I'm actually removing any air bubbles, and then when I'm ready to send it over to the gun, I simply move this little guy here, which I start to increase. In a moment, I'm sure we'll see it. Usually takes a couple of minutes for it to happen because we've got the air, air in the bubbles. Yeah, there we go. She's starting to rise now, and that'll get up to around three megapixels and. Uh, megapascals and that that then uh, ensures or ensures to me that I've got the the catalyst down at my gun you can see there all the air bubbles being removed so an incredible system and uh, this works so well it's ridiculous now there's no denying that uh, Graco make some of the, the best uh, spraying 
uh, pneumatic systems for delivering resins, paints, um, two-pack uh, products such as flooring, adhesives and all of this sort of thing. So one of the, the things I really concentrated on was making sure I got a Graco system. Now I chose an external mix uh, catalyzing gun uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the wastage of resins is something that is so profound. I mean, as a as a hand mixing type, catalyzing type um, business in the past, I have probably wasted as much resin as I've used, purely because you never know whether you're gonna need 250 mils or 500 mils. So you're always mixing too much, all of a sudden you've got a block of resin this high in, in an hour um, that you throw away. So effectively the wastage of resin is a problem. Now in a boat of this size, in a 40 foot catamaran, that could be you know, tens of thousands of dollars. So the decision was made to buy something that catalyzed outside of the gun um, and, and this was the decision here. So this particular gun here, this, this little Graco gun, um, is without a doubt one of the best things I've ever owned. Uh, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. It very easily cleaned up with acetone. Um, this has been used uh, around about 500 hours, still going strong. Um, you've got a trigger release here which stops you uh, inadvertently spraying when you don't want to. But the beauty of it is, is the resin is delivered through the, the central tip here and the catalyst is delivered through the outside um, uh, jets here and it's catalyzed outside of the tip of the gun. That has a couple of effects. It means you need to be around about 50 centimeters away from the job as you spray it because you'll physically see the color of the resin change from, in my case, um, vinyl ester that I'm using is purple. By the time it hits my job, it's green, and that indicates to me that it's catalyzed. If it stays purple, you've got a problem. You're not catalyzing. So you've got to make sure your catalyst is full, but the beauty of this is having it catalyzing about a centimeter away from the gun tip, mate, is the winner. It is an absolute winner. The great thing about that is that uh, um, I can see the physical catalyzing, and, and that has been an absolute winner for me on a job of this size. And so far I'm at around 800 litres of vinyl ester into this hull mould. That is a lot of resin. If it's not catalyzed, you've got problems. So I'll just show you in here um, how much cleanup I need to do at the end of the day. Now this is another thing is acetone is around about 400 bucks for 200 litres. Um, if you go into Bunnings, Canadian Tire or whatever, you can pay anything like $11 a litre. Uh, and if I, even if I buy a 20 litre pail of acetone, it's, it's going to be around 70 or 80 bucks. So I bought a 44 gallon drum or a 240 or 200, 200 litre drum full of acetone. And so far, I think I've used about 20 litres. How, why that is, is that in here, um, at the end of the day's spraying, the end of the day's spraying, uh, my resin, and I, let's say I've got to continue on with the same resin system tomorrow, I just simply unscrew this tip, remove that tip, Duck it in a cup of acetone, take out the, the ball valve, throw that in a cup of acetone, give it a good clean, give this a dry wipe. There's a small o-ring here, which uh, in the words of the manufacturer of the machine, never ask this o-ring to touch acetone. I don't really know what that means. I don't think o-rings are supposed to touch acetone. <laughs> the way they said never ask it to touch it, I think uh, that implies this has a personality. Well, in fact, it does, because without this O-ring, the shit goes everywhere. It back flushes through the machine, and you end up with catalyzed resin. So that O-ring sits ne neatly in there, and uh, and I give that a little light grease with silicon grease to make sure it gets a good seal. And I give it a light wipe down, hang it up, go home for the day. Doesn't get any better than that. And all up, my rinsing system is about 50 mils or 60 mils of acetone. Now that has got to save me thousands over the course of this job. So this, this particular setup here on a pallet rack has, uh, has just worked absolute perfection. I've had everything right at the transom. So I hope you like this, uh, this little short tech, tech, uh, tech episode and, uh, and join me next time on Life on the Mile.